Now, what's most interesting is that once you get through this and you realize what this is talking about, you realize that there was this art, and I'm going to be the, the glorious man to explain it to you, especially to you sisters out there who still are clueless about the divine feminine other than what you know, you, you're getting from uh, somebody else sometimes. You know, and that's just a phenomenon that's happening. This is the most secret knowledge. Isis said, nobody lifted my veil. So this means that this kind of has the effect of that it was so secret that nobody knew about it kind of anyway. So then once it got hidden, <laughs> you see, like women were actually in, in, initiated into this from the time that they were virgins. And then everything was so symbolic about the process that it actually equated to her understanding, understanding womanhood and how she needed to protect herself from beings that were always trying to basically get inside of her. So that way they could actually lead other men astray and women too. And that's how ifs work because they don't care if you're male or female or whatever. They will, they will interlope with you. They interlace over your body like a gelatinous film, just like the ones we were talking about earlier. And then they operate from there. There are many of them. They are social beings. And while there are some things that are like, they, they have that are like us, they are not like us. They have things that they do that would just be abhorred in our realm. And that's why there was always this space of disconnect, especially from certain ones, until we got to the stage of actually becoming mages, being able to actually govern ourselves properly outside of the protective field. So that way uh, we don't run into negative encounters with uh, basically uh, Jabba the Hutt and them <laughs> on the astro. OK, so now how these women work, though, and so let's say, for instance, these are the Sudanese women. The Zarko actually stretches across the world and actually had to be taken, of course, from even a more indigenous system. So we can say that all the mothers in the motherlands hold a type of knowledge that equates to the following. Y'all still with me? This knowledge equates to the following. Let me check this. Yes. Yes, we are still kicking. So this knowledge works like this, okay? So let's imagine grandma is so concerned about the tribe and the family that everything kind of boils down to who is marrying who. Now this is still like there in most countries, but was way stronger before, and this is what some call the arranged marriage. Like, making sure that Fatima is going to marry the most wealthiest man that is in the village that is, is on her level, okay? That's the old version. I'm um, excuse me, that, that's the, the most recent version, okay? There was one previous to that that involved a very elaborate ritual, that wasn't actually looking to attract a very wealthy man because any wealthy man in these times, like a sheikh, was already linked up with different entities. These women were actually looking to, like fishing through the stars, catch certain souls that were coming through. Like they say, you caught. <laughs> And so with their knowledge, they would be able to time the astronomy and the cosmos to knowing when certain beings fly through. And what they would do is have the virgin prepared with the bridegroom to cause an act that is akin to a CERN, where an electron gun, which is the male penis, is fired inside of a chasm or a womb and life or the spark of life and lots of sense because a portal is open at that moment and different tones and vibrations from the songs and the yelling attract a being that's coming by like what? And then that being flies into that zone and they've caught it like a fisher of women and men. Like this is where the real fisher of women and men come from. The ocean is the fish or excuse me, the, the ocean is the stars. The stars are the fish. And if they can catch what happens is this child that comes from this connection is, is more intelligent, is a genius, has skills. And so bringing that kind of being into the family actually kind of ensures that the family is going to become wealthy. And this is where this comes from. Okay? Trappers. You know, whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at it. 
for good or for bad, for better or for worse. This is how you get, like I said before, some people, I mean, how do you get, get, how do you get here? Well, in this case, personally, I mean, I think they like kidnapping genius metaphysical scientists off their home worlds and bringing them to backwood planets, maybe. Or somebody was trapping, thirst trapping. <laughs> That's it. They was thirst trapping. And I was coming through, you know, my stuff always look good. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. And I was like, yo, what is that? Ching, ching, ching. No, but serious. Your mom, your dad. But in this day, a specific calibration. Now, remember, this is now run over time where if became members of family that if started actually getting in DNA where, you know, you had half human, half gin, you know, this kind of mixture is going on. And in fact, things didn't always go well. <laughs> like, in fact, this wasn't like a go well, not go well kind of thing. The whole concept of good and evil wasn't even nowhere near where how finite it is. Good and bad is nowhere near how finite it is right now. And so in this process, actually, some women would either contract something because of the possession or some of them, nothing would happen. And they would actually go down in the caste system. They would kind of be looked at as, well, she's the one that didn't catch the if, <laughs> you know, the if baller that was coming through. you. She didn't do it. So now she's like the fourth wife. <laughs> and, you know, and then any girl that gets it, you know, she may be now like the big thing, depending upon what kind of entity that is actually coming through. OK. So that's as much as I'm going to bring about that because you can gander where things would go from there. You can gander if that knowledge was stolen, which it was. There's at least one account of troglodytes, which were working for the Moho Mandan priestess. This knowledge is now was only in the minds of a dead man right now. John Keeley, I believe, or yeah, John Keeley. Some, there's another guy with the exact same name now, so that's not the one you're looking for. I think it was George Keeley. And he wrote, he lived in Canada. He wrote to his deathbed about this, that he had uncovered the knowledge about how the matriarch had been usurped by the Moho Mandan priestesses, who also were commanding the troglodytes who were living underground to actually spy on the major areas that the women, like the, they call them the meeting houses. Like back in the day, in the tribe, there was a big house that everybody met at and discussed things about the deeper levels of the tribe. And it was it was like a main room. And that's where, you know, everything was handled from the tribe and all the open stuff. And then as you got back into the recesses, the more private stuff was talked about and discussed. And the arts of Ma'at were taught and discussed in the holiest of holies of these places. But the Moho Mandan, who were troglodytes in the first place, lived underground, had burrowed into those areas and would listen to the women and what they knew and what they understood. And they later took that same knowledge and started evoking endlessly. Now, the evoking is almost like on autopilot, literally. That's the some of the songs that you hear coming out, they're evoking entities. It's like a, ne a negatron. It just keeps bringing more and more negative dark beings into the dimension. And there's basically nothing that, or ne there's few things beyond, you know, balanced humans that actually is counteracting that force. So, you know, to me, that's why there's a need for one amplification, amplification, just getting something that amplifies the power of those already online and harmonic and then also replication, something that continues to push out balanced vibrations continuously just to counteract that vast uh, uh, chasm that is open. So now the conclusion here is because you've learned about everything now. You know where the in, you know there's entities. Everything is not a com damn computer. Don't get lost in that whole fake framework. Nature is real. So to understand her story, understand her story, or even beyond, it's not even just Gaia. Every single limitation you have break through. It's not just Gaia. There are seven women, seven sisters. That's where all of that seven stuff comes from. Those are seven different rooms, seven spectrums of color, horns. To where when something comes out of those tubes, you know, after being impregnated from a connection between Orion, who's a giant male, just an electron gun, and then spewing into these prisms. And that, see, they're doing it on a big level. And then these women in the Tsar cult, they, they're just, they were uh, emulating what they learned from the stars. 
And then even the czars, which are the Russian czars, okay, the Russian czars emulated from them. And that's why the Russian czars became the ones carrying black, black, black magic and the ones carrying this royal czaric, you know, and that's Tartaria. And the shit got corrupted completely. Like they really sunk their city overnight. <laughs> that's what all this mud flood and all that's really about. That's the bacchanalia. Look, every, there's guys out there revealing this now. And again, all this ties in and it connects.